6.2 is vector addition and subtraction. So by now you probably found out that um, vectors are certainly very different from anything you've done before in advanced functions or functions. Uh, there will be some relationship to some trigonometry in this course, but basically vectors is, is a different animal. And like I said, it used to be a different course. So don't feel upset if you're feeling a bit confused. Just follow along and I'm sure I can help you straighten all this out. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sure most of you have. So when you add or subtract two or more vectors, you get a resultant vector. And it looks like this. You write an R with a little arrow over it, which means vector, which represents the combined effect of the vectors. So let's say you walk due north for 800 meters. Due north means straight north, okay? So we're talking about north, south, east, west here. We're not, um, this isn't a coordinate plane. These are geometric vectors. So I walk due north for 800 meters. So let's say each one of these um, squares is 100 or 200. So two, four, six, eight. So here's your walking due north. And then you go due west for 600. So it's 200, 400, 600. Okay, so I went north and then I went west. Find the resultant. So the resultant is basically the distance from your starting point to where you end. So that's this point, this arrow here. That's your resultant vector. Don't forget to put little arrows on the end because they are vectors. Find the resultant. So when you're finding a resultant, you have to find both the magnitude and the direction. So I want to know how far is this? That would be my magnitude. And you probably know how to find the magnitude of this vector because you should know right away that this is a right angle triangle. If I go due north and then due west, I made a 90 degree turn. So that means that the absolute value of the resultant squared is going to be equal to 600 squared plus 800 squared. So all I have to do is Pythagorean theorem here. So the magnitude of the vector is going to be, um, this comes out to be a thousand once you take the square root of it, okay? So I know that the magnitude of R is a thousand, but I do need to know the direction. So it means I want to know what is this angle in here We'll call it theta, and you should know how to find that from a right angle triangle. I have the opposite and adjust adjacent sides. So this is the opposite is 600, the adjacent is 800. So the tan of theta, see I told you you'd use trig, is opposite over adjacent, so that's 600 over 800. So that means tan negative 1 of 600 over 800 is going to give me the angle. And that comes out to about 37 degrees. So you need a concluding statement. So you would say, therefore, a thousand meters and your direction would be north and then west. So you'd say north 37 degrees west because okay, so you always start with north or south you don't say west so many degrees north it just doesn't sound right the convention is really north something east or west and or um, south okay so the other way you could say the direction is using a bearing so remember bearings you did those in grade 11 and a bearing is measured from from the north right so the bearing would be this distance all around here. So how far is it from here to here? Well, that would just be 360 degrees minus 37 degrees or 323 degrees. So you would say 1,000 meters north, 37 degrees west, or add a bearing of, so you need to know both of them, a bearing of 323 degrees. Same thing. Okay, so let's move on to adding vectors now. So when I first started teaching this, I was a little confused as what they were doing. And so 
you know, like, don't feel badly if you didn't get it right away. But we'll figure it out. So I have two vectors here. Um, we'll call this one, I should have labeled them, we'll call this one vector U. And this one vector V. Vector V. What's your vector, Victor? That's a joke from Airplane, if you ever saw that movie. What's your vector, Victor? Okay, so we're adding. So you have two ways of adding vectors. You can add them tip to tail. So that means I put their bottom to the head, right? Or we call that, um, this is the tip, this is the tail. So here's tip to tail. So I go from here and then to here. So notice I've drawn them to scale in exactly the same direction. So you have to keep the same magnitude and direction if you're doing a geometric sketch. So I went over like, I don't know, over four and down four to get this vector. And this one was a little trickier, over three, down one. Okay, so what is my resultant? My resultant is from the tail to the tip, right? This is my resultant here. It's my resultant vector. I'm going to put in red with an arrow on the end of it. So this is R. That's my resultant. Now that's the tip to tail method. Normally we put vectors tail to tail though. And if you put them tail to tail, you need to use the parallelogram method. And in this case, you're going to, I had to sketch this one in so I'd have it in the right spot. So you put them tail to tail. So here, right? The pink and the green one. And then I make a parallelogram out of it. So I need this one down here. And that gives me this one here. And I draw this one, which is the same as the other green one. Same magnitude and direction. Notice that they're parallel. That's why we call it <coughs> a parallelogram. And then your resultant is the diagonal. Okay, so you probably see, now it's hard for me to actually measure this for you. Well, I could show you. Uh, let's see here. I do this. So here's my resultant. And this, this vector here, that's nice. So see how it goes from here to here on my, my pen? If I bring this over here, this is exactly the same length. Okay, so that's tip to tail or parallelogram method. Here's my resultant. And um, then we're going to look at how to subtract them. And so, like I said, when you subtract vectors, you add the negative of the positive vector. Does that make any sense? Because you know that plus minus really means minus. So vector u minus vector v is vector u plus the negative vector v. So the negative vector v just means going in the opposite direction, right? So if v is going this way, then this is negative v, or vice versa. If I called this one v, this would be negative v. So when I put them together, I have vector u here. So here was my vector u. I've got them tail to tail, so I'm going to make a parallelogram out of it. So here's positive u, and here's my negative v. So exactly I transpose this, like if we could cut and paste, and that's how I used to be able to do it in the classroom, I could just draw them and cut it, paste, bring it over here, bam. So when I make the parallelogram, this vector here is going to be exactly the same length as the one above. So these two are the same and parallel. Sometimes they don't look the same. It's, a, you know, one of those visual crazy things that you see and you say, oh, that doesn't look the same length, but it is. So these ones are parallel. And my resultant of u plus minus v is going to be this line right here, right? that vector. Put an arrow on it and call it r. Okay, so that's adding and subtracting. Make sure you draw a couple of them so that you get familiar with, uh, with just how to set them up. Okay, so let's go to a word problem. It says, in an orienteer orienteering race, anyone ever done orienteering before? They do a lot of that at our school. You walk 100 meters due east 
then north 70 degrees east for 60 meters. How far are you from your starting point and at what bearing? Okay, so this is where it starts to get a little confusing, but I'll help you with that by showing you something that's kind of, um, kind of interesting, maybe easy for you to see. Okay, so let's say um, every, let's go uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay, so we went this far. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay, there. I walked due east 100 meters. 100 meters. This is east, right? And this is just, this isn't a coordinate plane. This is just um, a compass. So the thing about a compass is that it's the same no matter where you move it, as long as you keep them parallel, right? So I could do north, south, east, west over here, over here. It doesn't matter. Or I could put it down here. I could have north, south, east, west. North is always north. Okay, so I've gone 100 meters west, or sorry, east, and now I have to go north 70 degrees east. So never fear. Draw yourself another set of north, south, east, west. So I'm going to do north, uh, north, south, east, west here. So here's another compass, another Another compass setting. It's still north, right? Doesn't matter how many of these I draw. This is still north. So from here, I'm going to go north 70 degrees east. So I go north 70 degrees. So 70 degrees is probably about this far for 60 meters. So let's say that's 1, 20, 20, 40, 60. Let's say it's about here doesn't have to be exactly to scale here. Okay, so here's my north 70 degrees east. Oop. Oh, I didn't, ma didn't match it. Close enough. Here it is here. So this is 70 degrees, right, from here to here. I'm going to write that on here because I want to know. I'm going to have to find some other values here. Okay, so here's my first vector, I've added this one to it, my resultant vector, the resultant is going to be from my start to my finish, right? So here's R. And there's R. Okay, so how far are you from your starting point and at what bearing? Okay, so from the starting point. So I need to know the bearing, so I need to know this angle here from north to this one. Okay, how am I going to go about doing that? So first I'm going to add a little other value here. I had 60 meters here and I have 100 meters here. So what I want to find out here is I want to find out this angle here. So if I know, let me find a nice color for that. Let's get this kind of rusty brown. If I know this angle here, this angle right here, I can use cosine law, right? I'd have side, angle, side, to find the length of R or the magnitude of R. So how do I find this angle here? Well, if this is 70, that means this angle in here is 20 degrees. Right, that's 70 to here, this is 20. And that means this from here to here, this whole thing here would be 180. So if this is 20, this is 160 degrees. And that's the thing, the angle you need to find first. I don't know how many students um, on their test will use the wrong angle for this. Remember, you need to find this angle. Let's write that on here. Find this angle always. Angel. Not an angel, but an angle. Okay, so I found that angle because I knew this was 70, this is 20, this whole block here from here to here is a 90 degree angle, so that's 20, and the whole thing would be 180 minus 20 is 160. Okay, so now all I have to do is find the magnitude of R, which is going to be much easier than you think, right? Because now you've got Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say the magnitude of R squared, you remember your, um, your cosine law, is going to be 
So I do 100 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 100 times 60 times the cos of 160 degrees. Um, let me just write that formula out here for you. If you remember, it was a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay, so that's, that's the formula we're using here, which is the cosine law. If you need to, you could go back and review that from mm, probably grade 11, right? Okay, so I'm not going to spend all my time doing that for you the mathematical part of it. I'm showing you, you need to set up the cosine law for this and you would get approximately 157.7 and that would be meters. Okay, so we've got the magnitude of R and I need to know the bearing. So in order to know the bearing from here, I uh, need another color. Let's get this blue going on. So the bearing is from here to here, right? Bearing measured from north to the resultant vector. So I want to know what is this angle. So in order to know this angle, I need to know what this angle is here, right? This is what I want to find, this one right in here. So how are you going to find that angle? Well, now that you know this length, here, so R was 157.7, 157.7. So I have this length. You can use your famous little sine law, right? Never knew you'd use trig so much, did you? Okay, so here, let's go. So the sine of 160 degrees over the resultant. So you had to find this first, right? So you can't find that before you find the resultant. The sine of 160 over 157.7 is equal to 60 over the sine of this angle here. Let's call it, um, let's call it theta. Equals sine theta over 60. Okay, so sine this is like sine a over a equals sine b over b sine law right sine law again from grade 11. okay so all i have to do to solve that is find the sine of theta so sine theta equals 60 times sine 160 divided by do you know the n thing you go down diagonal down so i'm going to write it in red sine theta equals 60 times you multiply on the diagonal 160 degrees and you're going to divide it by 157.7 and um, let's just write sine oh, okay well it's too late I already wrote it that way so I'm going to say we just want to know the inverse sine of that so sine negative 1 of this 60 times sine 160 degrees over 157.7 is going to give me theta, right? So theta is approximately equal to 7.5 degrees. So you could do that on your calculator. Oh, am I off the page? Nope. nope, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so I've got this angle here is 7.5, so the bearing from here to here, so therefore the bearing equals 90 degrees minus 7.5 and that's going to be um, about 82.5 degrees and then you would have a nice concluding statement therefore the resultant is 157.7 meters at a bearing now they asked for a bearing so that's why I'm giving a bearing of 82.5 degrees. Now if they didn't ask for a bearing you could say north 82.5 degrees. Um, no you wouldn't because that wouldn't make any sense. It's going to say north 95 degrees south. No just leave it like this. It's a bearing of 82.5 degrees. 
Okay, so that's your orienteering race question. You'll see lots of these in your homework assignment. So let's go on to another, another thing you need to know, which is ground speed. So when they talk about ground speed, all that means is the sum of the air speed and the wind velocity. In other words, when you're up in the air in a plane and um, you're flying, let's say you're flying at, I don't know, how fast do planes go? Let's say 400 kilometers an hour. And the wind is pushing you. So say the wind is behind you. Your resultant speed is your 400 kilometers an hour plus the wind speed, right? It's pushing you along. Or if you had wind coming at you, then that's going to slow you down. So your velocity may be 300 kilometers, but you have wind coming at you at 30 kilometers. So then you'd have to subtract them. That's all that means. Okay, so when you see the air speed or the ground speed, don't, don't get all upset. It's just the resultant of those two velocities. So it says an airplane is traveling at a velocity of 450 kilometers per hour, south 20 degrees east. That should be a little degrees on that. South 20 degrees east. When it encounters a wind with a velocity of 140 kilometers per hour north 40. I don't know if you need the degree in there or not. Check your textbook, see if they use that. I would. North 40 degrees east. What is the ground velocity of the airplane, the magnitude, and the direction? So your job is to see what happens. How is the speed of the plane being affected by that wind that's blowing the plane? Another very popular question in vectors probably see something very similar to this on your first unit test. Okay, so let's get the plane going first. We want to draw where is the plane. So 450 south 20 degrees east. So south, that's this way, south, north, but 20 degrees east. So I have 20 degrees here. Very little 20 degrees and it's 450 kilometers. Okay, so let's draw something that looks kind of like, we'll try to make it kind of to scale, but don't, like I said, don't worry too much about that because we just want the result in. Although sometimes it helps if you're, you're a little more accurate. So let's say it's about this long. That's 450 kilometers per hour. So I'm going to label this 450. And it's south, 20 degrees east. Got it? Okay, so it encounters a wind with a velocity of 140 kilometers per hour north 40 degrees east. So what you're going to do now, and this is kind of where people get lost. What do I do? What do I do? You draw on another, another compass point, right? So I have something to measure it from. So he, I don't like this ruler because I can never see where it is. Okay, here's my north-south. And we'll just put a an east west right here. Okay, so draw on another compass rating, just like that. And I'm going to draw my vector on, which is going to be 140 north 40 degrees east. So I'm going to make it shorter, um, so probably about a quarter, right? One quarter of that one would be 560, so a little less than a quarter. Okay, so here's my wind. And I want it to be 40 degrees east. So I'm going to try to like this would be 45, right? Straight in the middle. So let's say 40 degrees like this. And there's my little wind. That's still a strong wind though, right? 140 kilometers an hour. Wow. Glad I'm not in that plane. It'd be bumpy. Okay, so, oh, forgot to write on that. That's 140. Okay, so I want to find the resultant the ground velocity is the resultant of these two. So remember I told you the wind is going to slow you down and it's also going to blow you off course sometimes here. That's why they have to do all these adjustments in the air. So here's my R. Okay, so this one a little trickier because you need to do some thinking here about where your angles are. So, and the trick to this one, and it is a trick because once you've seen it once, you're going to see it again. Um, I don't know if I have something that 
maybe this might be a little too crazy, but if you look at my two norths here, they're parallel lines, aren't they? So if I go, remember the Z pattern? I'm going to draw it over here because I don't want, I don't, oh, that doesn't even work. Oh, somebody want to buy me some pens? Oh my goodness. Okay, so let, let's just draw a Z pattern. So if I have two parallel lines like this, right, and I have something that crosses it like this, this is from grade nine. This angle here is going to be equal to this angle here. Remember the Z pattern? So I have a 20 degree angle right here. I'm just going to shade it in a little bit. So this is 20 degrees here. I'm colored very well. Then this is also 20 degrees in here. And that's kind of the key for you to be able to solve this question. Because I know from my second velocity here, this was north 40 degrees east. So I know this is 40 degrees in here, right? And this is 20 more. So that means that this whole angle from here to here is going to be 60. Okay, so I'm just going to make a, a quick sketch of this triangle over here so you can see it a little better. Make it bigger. Okay, so this is what I have right now. I have this is 60 degrees. Um, I have this is 450. And this is 60. And this is my resultant here that I'm trying to solve for. So you can see that now that I've got this 60 degree angle in here, I can figure out this resultant using the cosine law. So the magnitude of R squared is going to be, and you could label these if you want, if that helps you, but you should know that, um, you know, when you're using the cosine law, it's just this one squared plus this one squared minus two times, blah, 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 right? So let me write that out. So we have the first one squared, 450 squared, plus 60 squared, minus 2 times 60 times 450 times the cos of 60 degrees. Oh, you probably even know what the cos of 60 degrees is, right? That's a half. Okay, so the square root of all this, if you do all the math part, and I leave that to you so as not to waste your time you need to practice. So I get about 398.9 kilometers per hour. That's my ground speed. Okay, and what am I missing? Same thing as in the last question. I need to know the direction. So I want to know this bearing here. This is my bearing. So this, the answer is going to be 398.9 kilometers per hour at a bearing of, okay, did you figure it out before I did for you? Um, well, we have a problem because we didn't find this angle yet. And we did that in the other question by using the sine law. So we're going to use the sine law again. Okay, so the sine of 60 degrees. So this over the resultant. Remember the sine law was kind of like um, you can use um, like sort of like a an X pattern. So we have this this over this equals sine theta over why does it write 60 here? It must have been I put 60 in the degrees. This is the length here is 140. The magnitude was 140 of this little vector. So the sine of 60, and I want I want this angle here. So I'm just going to circle those two. Remember they made a nice X. I told my students it was like chromosomes in math. So the sine of 60 over the magnitude of R, which was 398.9, is equal to the sine of theta over 140. So sine theta equals this times this divided by that. So sine theta equals 140 times sine 60 over 398.9. And of course, you're going to do um, 
calculate this and then do second function sine, right? So theta is approximately equal to 17.7 degrees. So if this is 17.7. Um, the bearing, we also know this is 20, so mm, it's kind of messy here, but do you understand what I'm saying? So we have to do, we have to know this full angle here, right? So I need 20, so I need plus 20 degrees, that's 37.7 degrees, and I'm going to subtract that from, if I'm doing a bearing, I'm going to subtract that from three, uh, 180, so um, 180 degrees minus 37.7 degrees equals, ooh, I didn't do this calculation, 37, 38 would be 62, right? So 61.3, 161.3 degrees. I'm going to double check that because I think I made a mistake. How about 162? Oh, math. 10, 82 is 10. That didn't work. 73 is 20. <laughs> ah, help me, somebody, somebody help me. Yeah, let's use a calculator because I don't want to think too hard here and I don't want to waste your time while I make silly mistakes. 142.3, thank you. Little pink calculator. There we go. So at a bearing of 142.3 degrees, or could you give the direction for that? Or you could say south... 37.7 degrees east, right? South, 37.7 degrees east. Okay, so that's that's a ground speed question. Get used to those. Do a few of them. Make sure you've got them all figured out because um, they do show up quite frequently. Okay, the last thing I want to do with you is this little, little test question that asks you to Describe, so we have vector A, B, and C, and they want to know what is vector B, C. Now, some students have a lot of trouble with this, but I'll show you. It's really quite easy if you look at, so if this is vector A, this is also A here. This is A. This is A, right? Because it doesn't matter if they're parallel and they have the same, um, same lengths, same magnitudes. So this and this and this and this are all vector A's. If this is vector C, this is also vector C. This is C. This is C. Okay, so think about that while we're going along here. So B, this is B, this is B, this is B. So if I said, what is B to C? Describe it in terms of vectors A, B, and C. So B to C. So I'm going from here to here. How would you describe that? Well, it's related to A, but it's going in the opposite direction, right? So it's the negative of vector A. What is GF from here to here? Oh, well, that's the same as going from here to here. So that is vector A. How about O to B? So I'm looking at this. How would you describe that? That's a resultant, isn't it? So it would be the sum of these two. See, we made a nice parallelogram. So that's vector A plus vector B. Okay, a little trickier. What is A to C? So here to here. Oh, A to C. So this time we're going, you don't have to think of it as a result. You can say well, if I went this way and then this way, right? So I'd have to go backwards here. So that's negative A plus B. So negative vector A plus B. How about B to G? B to G. So I'd have to go this way and this way, right? To, go, to get to G, I could go this way plus this way. So what's this way? Well, that's just the same as C. And then this way would be negative A. Um, 
plus negative a, I'm going to say, just so you can see what I'm talking about. C minus a, or you could do minus a. We could go this way, minus a plus c, or minus a plus c. And finally, what's o to f? O, how am I going to get here, from here to here? So I'd go up, down here, and across here. So what is this one? This is c. What is this vector here? Well, that's the same as this one, right? This is b. So I went c plus b, and then across here, that's a. So I can write it as c plus a plus b. Or you could write it as a plus b plus c. Your choice. Okay, so that is the end of this lesson. It was, it's a difficult one, and you have to kind of wrap your head around drawing these um, these vectors and the word problems. So go over some of the ones that I've done, maybe before you start your homework, or pause and, and follow along, and I'm sure you'll catch on. Don't give up on vectors. Calculus is much easier, I think. Probably because I haven't done a lot of vectors. You know, like, I've done a lot of calculus. But anyway, have fun with it, and don't despair. Bye for now.